Good morning, everybody. I see lots of friends on here. Marlene and Stephanie and Kelly and Michelle and Pam, Jackie, Jean, Pamela, Karen. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time and you stopping in. So I found um, another cool thing to do with the blends. And I'm sorry, my dog is a little noisy back there today with the blends and actually with window sheet. Now, here is the beauty of this. And I'll show you. I think I still have another set. Let's see. I might have pulled most of them off. Nope, here's one I just found. So <clears throat> if you're not familiar, just to do a little recap here, Stampin' Up! recently started doing their photopolymer stamps with an image in the back. And I'll show you what I mean. It's not that one, of course. This one? Yes. So you can actually peel your stamps off of the, the sheets that they come on and you can stick them in the back. Now, I was kind of doing this anyway because, and I'll tell you why, and it's only personal preference. So you can do whatever you like. But when I pulled this little flimsy sheet off, honestly, the little one, it kind of annoyed me just because it was always kind of like here, there, and everywhere. I never really put it back together. So... This is a way for you to be able to create this card, is what I'm getting at, without really having to have um, any supplies. Now, these have the shadows on them, so obviously you don't want to use these pieces because then you'll see the background. Although you could, it might be kind of cool. Jack, sit down. Sit. Might be kind of cool because you could color this in, but the new pieces that come in the cards nowadays have clear sheets. So you're kind of getting free window sheet to do this particular technique that we're going to do today. And then the other thing is quite a while back, we talked about coloring the pearlized or pearlescent paper, and it doesn't really take regular color. So if you use the regular water-based reinkers, it just kind of sits on top and it doesn't really do anything. It just sits there. It takes a very long time to dry, if at all. However, you can do it with alcohol and with the alcohol that we are using. So we're going to do stamp and blends, but I'm going to show you these pieces first. And I will tell you one thing, you can dry them. If you dry this with a heat tool, first of all, you need to be very careful because it will curl the paper. But what you can do is, and I did some ahead of the time, you can actually just let them sit and they will dry. Now, one other thing some people may notice about this is that it does have a little bit of um, maybe a marking or scratching on it from pulling your stamps off or if you weren't really very careful with it. But quite honestly... With the technique, once you put the color on, you can't see any of that. And it probably would just add a little bit of extra texture to it. So it doesn't need to be 100% perfectly clear. So these are all pieces that I have removed from stamp sets that have just been sitting over here off camera in a drawer. Because I'm like, well, I can use them for window sheets. And I know we've I've showed you this before. You can use them to make like little popper elements if you wanted to. So you could put hook this into your card and then you could put like say a whale on there and when you open it it'll pop up so you can use that for that as well different size strips you can use it for your window sheet on your shaker card instead of buying window sheet but now that they are all completely clear you can also use it for this so I'm going to show you what you're going to do and then I'm going to show you some that I've already made that we can make into a card. So one thing with these, you're always going to want to put a white background behind it because it kind of makes it pop a lot more. And once we actually work with this, I'll show you what I mean. Now, um, my friend Donna, who watches on here, was kind enough that she sent me these color applicator bottles. So I have the alcohol in this and the alcohol, again, does need to be 
99 is preferred if you can get it. I have 91 and it still works, but the higher the alcohol content, the better it is going to look for your cards and it'll work better with spreading wise. But this is all they had at that store. So she gave me this and she said, you could use one with alcohol and use one with water. Well, I put water in the one, but the honest, I was fooling around with it last night. It wasn't last night, it was yesterday. And what I came up with this is actually a better idea. So I'm, I'm going to show you. So we're going to start today with, I have some really pretty color schemes and I have them all written down so you'll know. So I'm going to do two different ones just to show you what you can do. So let's go with I'm going to do um, dark, and everything should be dark, because dark is going to show up better on here. Dark Night of Navy, I have Dark Misty Moonlight, and then I'm going to do Dark Cajun Craze, and what is this one? Dark Magenta Madness. No, I don't want to go with magenta, because I think that's going to be too, too pinky and not ready. Dark Melon Mambo. I'm going to try these. So... What we're going to do is we're just going to do the same thing with our brush tip of our Stampin' Blend. We're going to just put some color around in a couple different places. It can be big. It can be little. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to do the same thing with the Misty Moonlight. I'll kind of try to keep them slightly separated. And the other thing is, when you do this, now I'm just doing it. Uh, because I already have some samples dry, you can do this in layers. So what you could do is with these that are just blues, you could do the alcohol technique and then add, add the other colors later because you do need to keep in mind that colors, if they are together, they can kind of turn muddy, but also at some point they, they kind of can turn into a bronzish color. So it just really depends on I guess how you feel with bringing the colors together versus having a set specific color in one area. Okay, so when we did this before, just to kind of give you a recap in case you happen to miss it, this is a smaller one, let me get the bigger one. I was using my water painters and they're empty. Oops, that's a really big one, don't want that one. Hold on, there's one more here somewhere. One, two, where's the third one? Here it is. So, so this is just the bigger tip. So what you can do is you can take your alcohol, which I just have in a glass. And if you want, you can just take your, and I'm just going to go with a little of the uh, Cajun. You just kind of, kind of stipple, dab, lightly press it on there, whatever it is you want to use as your word. And then you want to wipe it off before you go to another color. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is with these color applicators, and this was pretty cool. So I'm going to try to just do the blues. So what I did is this has no cap on it. It's the kind of thing that you would use if you're coloring your hair. So you just tilt it over, and it's going to let a little bit of this. I'm trying to do just one color at a time. I don't really want a lot. And again, it does take time for the alcohol to evaporate, okay? Now, what you can do with your other bottle, since I don't have anything in it, is you can actually blow the alcohol around. Which, instead of using a straw, um, <laughs> I also saw Lisa Curcio used a uh, nasal bulb. So if you have children or grandchildren who aren't using their nasal bulb anymore, and you want to go ahead and clean it out, you can do that too. But the other thing you can do is you can still take your brush if you wanted to. So you can see this got a little bit of pink. So remember, pink and blue are, are going to make a purple. So this, one thing about doing it this way, and then also without actually heating it, is, and you can see it's bleeding out here on the side, which is no biggie. I have plenty of paper under there. Um, but what it does is it if you're doing it in, in single layers of color, you will have just that color. So you won't have to worry about it bleeding into anything else. If you're doing it with multiples, you just have to kind of be careful what color you put next to what. So you don't get a big brown blob. Unless you're going for maybe like a chocolate paper or a poop emoji paper. <laughs> then I guess that will be right up your speed. 
So I'm just gonna wipe this off. And you don't really need your, br your brush to be soaking wet. So I'm just gonna put, these didn't have any on them at all. I'm just gonna put a little bit more and then I'm actually gonna use that other one just to, you definitely wanna have some sort of a cloth, but just to blow it out. So this one's just the air. So you can just kind of blow your colors around merge them together so this again is going to take some time to set and dry okay so that's just one thing you can do and then i'm going to show you a couple other things i did so in the meantime i'm going to pick this up just so i can move it and let it sit so maybe you can see that a little bit better we do have this big drib of color here but it will eventually dry and it looks, it'll look really cool because it'll have a big dribble of color. So I'm going to set this on the side. <laughs> Somewhere, hopefully, that my friend over here won't find it. And I'm going to show you one that I did yesterday. Now, this one I did with Melon Mambo and Bermuda Bay. So I know it's kind of difficult to see, but I'm going to grab a big piece of white cardstock and slide it under and then you can see how it shows up it's really cool now for this one i did go a step farther and i added wink of stella but just to be honest with you it's the wink of stella i added this it's been at least 12 hours and the wink of stella still isn't fully dry so there's little spots but like this here is wet all these little bigger spots are wet. So if you're going to do that, just be mindful. It might take a lot longer to dry. So that is Melon Mambo Bermuda Bay, which would make a really cool background. And then another one I did, I kind of was thinking of maybe doing one that was like a Christmassy thing for a background. This is Cherry Cobbler and Granny Apple Green. And you can see over here, the granny got kind of washed out. And then we have a good amount of granny here. And then over here, it almost changed to like a, um, it's kind of like a rusty greenish red. So that was where the granny apple and the cherry cobbler merged together. But it's pretty neat. You can definitely see it much more when you hold it against white. So these will definitely have to be backed on white. And then finally, this one was kind of like a crazy one that I thought would be a good one. And it's probably, I should get a different, let me get a bigger piece of paper because you can't really see the whole thing on this one because the piece of acetate was so large. Move this over. So this one was Jade, Razzleberry, and Cajun. And I think it looks really good together, like a combination that you may not really think to use together. And I probably would have, and you can. So here's the thing. I'm going to show you this. Let me move this over so it doesn't get splattered or ruined. You definitely want to make sure that you protect your workspace when you do this because otherwise you're going to end up with oh I don't want that on there and you're going to end up with a lot of mess so I'm going to bring my dark jade back out one more time and I'm just going to bring a little bit more over here a little bit more over here and I might actually grab another a little bit darker of a green mm. I'm going to bring just a little bit of the soft succulent. Dark, soft succulent. Again, you want to go with the darks. It's not really too dark. Okay. And then since I already did this kind of with the drops, I don't want to really true, like hit it too hard. So I'm just going to use my brush and just same thing, kind of just tapping it. Spread it out a little bit. Wait, it'll have a little bit more of a concentrate. <laughs> and I know this is probably, you know, some people may be like, oh my gosh, we're still doing the alcohol. But it's kind of cool because we finally figured out how to do alcohol without, um, <laughs> without having to buy a whole nother line of inks, which is pretty cool. So one other thing I'm going to do, just because this piece behind here is um, just a scrap piece. So I'm also going to take my aqua painter or whatever the heck we're calling it water painter and i'm just gonna do some splats 
of alcohol, just a little bit, because what that will do is you'll kind of have those little dribbles. But the other thing that you can do is you can even take your marker. So I'm not going to use, this one was Cajun, right? Yes, Cajun that I used. I want to use something that's just a teeny bit darker, so it kind of brings out the green flecks. So I'm going to grab shaded spruce, and I'm going to try to do this just onto the green. So I'm just doing the same flicking technique. So we'll have a little bit of something on our green. So again, I did that with an alcohol marker. So I'm going to bring this. Let me grab my paper so you can see. So then you have the alcohol splatters, the other splatters. You could add some splatters of the, uh, let me do that, just a little bit of the Cajun here. Just as kind of a blank spot. So then you have these just like that. So you can also use this on um, vellum, which is how I demonstrated most of, not last week, but the week before that. We did a lot of vellum. So there's that. And I'm going to show you just one, one more thing with this. And I'll just do something. We'll try to do something a little bit more Christmassy. So I will do the shaded spruce and the dark cherry cobbler. Oop, that's light. And the dark real red. Okay, so the same thing, if you were going to add Wink of Stella to this, you would just do the same thing, which mine are almost all empty. So you would just take off your cap and just kind of make a puddle first, and then you could flick the Wink of Stella. But try to make it so it's a little bit tinier of dots, because the bigger ones are taking way, way long to dry. So let's just do this one more time. And I'm going to do the green first. And... So here's the alcohol. Just gonna put that on. Oops, and then bottle full of air. Just kind of move it around. Now, unlike water, when you watercolor, you can push the alcohol around on the acetate. So it definitely will move. So you have that. Again, if you're going to let this, um, if you're going to not let this, and I'll show you this one, but this will be the only one I'm doing with your heat tool. So you're going to let it heat up. And you're going to want to move this the whole time. So also this air will move the color. And I have this really far away because the acetate will curl when it's heated. Okay. So you get the picture. So then I'm going to go ahead in and just add in some spots of the dark cherry cobbler and the real red. <laughs> and I see you guys chatting about something. I'm wondering, you're wondering that yourself, but you didn't want to be mean. Uh-oh, what happened? I'm I'm trying to scroll back here and say, you said I'm using black for Halloween. Oh, that would be cool. That would be super cool. So, and then I have, I'm trying not to go into the spots where there is the alcohol. So there's just a, it sounds like a mouse in here. I'm surprised the dog isn't wondering what this noise is. Okay, so same thing again. I'm just going to do this with the brush instead. So just kind of spread it out. So you can flick your your red. You could even do like a totally complementary color to whatever colors you use. So maybe if you did this with, um, for Halloween, just speaking of, thinking of Halloween colors, if you did this with black or sorry with orange and purples and maybe a little bit of green and then you could flick your black uh stamp and blend marker to kind of give it like a a yucky halloween creepy look to it but it does look pretty cool i i think it looks really neat and i'm gonna do this once more here since i have it and even when they're still wet if you do the flicking it'll still make it separate there we go. Let me just wipe this off. Okay. 
So there you have that. That one is closed. And I'm gonna see if I can lift this up. So you could totally use this as a Christmas version. Around the edge here, it'd be best if you have a paper towel because you can kind of absorb some of the excess. But it does dry pretty quickly. So there's what it looks like. It's really, really pretty. So I like it. I think it's a really, really cool technique. So there you go. Now, one other one that I didn't do yet, and I haven't tried this at all, so bear with me. And this is, and this is what I have left over from a um, paper share that I did. By the way, my paper share is open, so if you're interested in doing the holiday paper or ribbon or combo share, let me know. There's a sign up on um, my website, rachethestamper.com, and there's also a link to it on Facebook as well. When this video is over, I will repin that back to the top. So with the pearlescent paper, what I'm going to try to do just to make this kind of more of for what I think I want to do, I'm going to go with um, dark, where is it, Calypso Coral and dark pumpkin pie and, and Bermuda Bay, dark Bermuda Bay. And then I wanted some other type of a blue. Let's see. Dark balmy blue. Let's try those. And I'm not sure. Again, I haven't done this one yet, so we'll see how it works. So I'm going to do the two oranges first. I'm not going to make this huge just because I haven't done it. So worst case scenario, if I don't like it, it's not that much paper. Okay. I'm going to do those, those two first. So I'm going to try the same thing with the squirting. Okay, now this one I think you may have to actually, yes, yeah, spread a little bit more. Okay, and I know I'm going from the same tone, so orange to oranges. Oh, you know what would be nice too? A little bit of melon mambo. Not melon mambo. Mango. Mango melody. It's such similar names sometimes. I'm saying them confusedly. Now you can tell that this is actually going through the other side of the paper is starting to feel a little bit wetter. So it's definitely going to have a different finish than anything we've done thus far because the vellum and the window sheet don't really absorb anything. It just kind of sits on top until the alcohol evaporates out of it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit this just quickly with the heat tool. Amy, you signed up. You're good. I have uh, four people so far. Trying to shoot for eight. So if anybody else is interested. So I'm just trying to move this around while I dry it. And I'm going to try to get this one drier because I want to add another layer of color to it. Okay. So this almost kind of got a little bit crystally. I don't know if it's because it's the way it's reacting with the paper, but this actually has texture to it, which is kind of, kind of cool. So let me now move on. I'm going to do Bermuda Bay is going to be the heavier color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of balmy blue. You could also use seaside spray if you have it. Oh, and you could do ink smooshing. I did see somebody did that yesterday too. I think um, Patty Bennett was sharing something about that when she was, she did hers actually with the vellum on two different sides. So she could add different colors, which is another thing you could do with the vellum. And probably even with the um, uh, the acetate, you would just have to wait for it to really dry before you did it. All right, that looks good. So I'm not going to dribble because I don't want it to totally get into it. So I'm going to go with the brush technique. I'm going to do the lighter one first. And then to the Bermuda. So 
So if you have the 99 alcohol, it's going to break this up much easier and faster for you. So just keep that in mind. If you have 91 alcohol, it does take a little bit more to kind of loosen the color. Break up the composition and move it around. Just kind of depends on what you're using. Just keep that in mind. The cool part about this, though, is that you get a pearl, a pearlized look on top of it. And you don't have to add the wink of Stella and wait for it to dry and all that stuff. I'm going to just hit this once more. PayPal. They're still not finished with the PayPal thing yet, unfortunately. They're working on it, but they haven't, I guess, I don't know. It's not there yet, Amy. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people would love that option. And one thing to note about this is that you can see it did go through a little bit on the back. And there's a little wet spot right here still. But otherwise, it still kind of is just one-sided. So there's that. So what I think I'm going to do with this, and hopefully I have a large enough piece, is I think I'm going to cut this out with the diorama die and then have a background piece behind it. And then I'm going to cut out something else I'll show you in a minute. All right. So we have that. We have, let me see. Let me see which diorama is going to fit for what I wanted to do. Oh, my. Am I keeping you up back there, buddy? That one. Let's see if I can get the bigger one. I can. You know what? I'm just going to have a little bit more that is going to be the opaque color, but we're going to go with that for the background. You know what? I did want one a little bit bigger, so I'm going to pull that out. And we're going to have to pick a complementary shade here. I'm going to try to get in as much as I can. So I'm going to die cut this. This tape has seen its day. It's sticking a little too much. So we're going to trash that. Do we have this? And then I want to do the bigger die. I think I'm going to do it in... I'm going to go with coral. And then we'll put it on... We'll put it on... Um, let's see what that looks like. Yeah. We'll put this one to something different when we lay it down. Whatever this piece is, is a scrap, so it could have some weird edges, so. Oh, that worked out well. So we have that, and I, they don't really necessarily have to go the same way. They can if you want. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. And finally, I'm going to grab, where is what I wanted? Do I still have it? I don't know if I have a piece that is the correct color, so. Let's see. I have my glimmer paper here. And I'm going to try to do what I think I want to do. So let me see. I'm going to grab. This might be too much color, so it may end up going back to white. We'll see. But I want to make sure. So we're up here. And I'm just going to grab my scissors just to kind of trim this. Like so. But I want to put some adhesive on the back of this. So my, uh, I didn't finalize my order yet, <laughs> so I'm still, I'm using up my Sizzix adhesive sheet. Don't judge. Put that down, give it a good press, and I'm kind of just going to give this a wonky cut just to we used to carry Sizzix, right? Because we used to have the 
big shot. So there you go. I'm still technically using Stampin' Up! supplies. They're just no longer available. I put this on. Which way do I like it better? Like that. And I'm going to die cut. Now I'm going to run this through. Because first of all, it's glimmer paper. So it's a little thicker. So what I'm going to actually do with this one is I'm going to run it through upside down so it gets better contact. Okay, so I'm going to put this through. I'm going to go back and forth twice. Because it's also the first time I've used this die. Nope, I'm going to take a couple. Now, these also don't com cut completely. So, we have these little spots here, but I want to make sure some of the ribs come out for the fish. So, I'm going to go through two more times. And I kind of just changed the position of where I had it the first time. So, it's hitting the roller a little bit differently. There we go. All right, so I'm going to pull this off. And the nice part is you can see now some of the pieces came out in in the die so they're still in there so we know those are good so what I'm gonna do is take my snips and I'm just gonna cut the connections where these are still here so you kind of have to cut to make your own fish because this is kind of like a three it's like a 3d full cut so you would almost put the whole thing and then you could flap certain parts of it out but I want the whole fish cut out so I'm just going to do a little snipping okay and last so hopefully whoever's watching this none of you are in the path of the hurricane that's down there in Florida that sounds pretty pretty scary Thinking about all those people that uh, lost their homes. I know they had to demolish that other building, which is so sad. I do feel for them. That's awful. Fortunately, I guess stuff is just stuff. I know I would be really upset, but at least they made it out with their lives. And the people that are working down there, I'm guessing, had to take a pause with the storm that came just pulling just these little bits out they probably would pull away when I pulled out that adhesive sheet from the back but I was just trying to make it a little bit easier on myself so we have that let's go with uh let's go with coastal cabana because almost the Bermuda Bay is a little bit softer back there so let's do that we'll do this I have to cut this one in half and let's see what this looks like. If the fish is too much, worst case scenario, we can always cut another white fish. And just have a bright white fish, which could be the ticket against this. We're going to have to look and see. Let's take a peek. We have our little, kind of looks like, you know, like Dory with the little cave there. You know, I think it's very pretty with the fish, but I do think I'm going to need to go with a white, white fish. And I think I'm going to cut two layers. So I'm going to show you one other thing I'm going to do just to make it really stand out. Oops. I'm going to cut this at five and a half and four and a quarter. And I'm going to do the same thing to two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and grab my adhesive sheet once more. Just going to peel this back. I think I can fit. Can I fit the fish on there twice? Let's see. Um, huh, I might be able to. I'm just going to do this for now, just to so you guys don't have to go with all the gluing and pasting. just going to pull that off. Now we have the um, adhesive sheet that's on. I'm going to cover that up just because it's going to go through my die cutting machine and I don't want any other stuff to get stuck on there if I can help it. So I'm just putting that, covering that little bit up with that release paper. So what I'm going to do is, let's go 
gonna pop these couple little doodads out. I'm gonna run this through two times. So if I do cut off a little piece of one, I'll just put that underneath. So I'm gonna run this through. Same thing again though, I am gonna do it uh, facing upright. Even though this isn't glimmer paper, it'll still give a better cut. So I'm gonna go back and forth three times. And then, so you can see I have a nice cut here, but since I have to, to remove these, I'm just gonna fit this one in and cut again before I pull that out. If I can get him over right there, that should be good enough. So I'm gonna just do this again. I'm gonna run it through three times and then we'll cut both of them out. Funny because I know I'm always telling you guys to um, get the die or get the punch. You're gonna buy it anyway. And I was like, I'm not getting that. I am not going to use that fish. But you know what really sold me more than the fish was the coral piece. <laughs> the coral piece. And then there's also a small fish in there. And I was like, you know, I should have listened. Should have listened to my own advice. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to go in here and just nip out these little connection pieces. Just like so. Good. And then we will, um, the great part is we'll just pull off the adhesive and I can just adhere these together with no moss or fuss or glue. I love these adhesive sheets. I think these are one of the absolute favorite things of mine that Stampin' Up! carries because they make just things so much easier. And if you felt like you needed a little bit of color, we could always um, sponge or blender brush something onto this fish. So I'm kind of just following the natural line of where I think the fish would go. Missed a little spot on that one, it's stuck underneath. All right, so just being on the safe side, I'm going to get out my silicone mat, and they both look like they're pretty, pretty even. Yeah, so I'm going to pull this one off. Okay, so my little... Little dudes didn't come out on this. Oh, I ripped that one of those fins. Got a little too aggressive in my cutting, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to put this... Oh, there's another little spot. Put this down, kind of just to slightly hold it. You can see right here on this little one, I ripped it, but it's okay. I'm going to set him down. I'm actually going to push that in so he'll stay when I lift him. So I have him on my silicone mat. And then, come on, little pieces. I'm going to put the other one on top, but I think I'm going to, just for like a teeny bit of effect of color, I'm going to blend just a little bit on. And I'm going to do a lighter color just so it's not too, too overwhelming or dark. So I'm going to go with just a little bit of Coastal Cabana. And a teeny bit of uh, Daffodil Delight. Yes, that's what I wanted. Okay. 
Okay, that's good. That way it has just a little bit of something. It's still pretty white though. All right, so I wanted to do that ahead of time. That way, once I pulled this off, I could just put this right together. And just to save myself a little bit of effort, I'm gonna pull these out ahead of time. They did come off a little bit easier that way. Kind of put them in a pile over here and I'll clean my desk off when I'm done. And this one, when I cut, I got a little bit nippy and I cut this little part off. So it's not really a big deal. If you're pulling these, I'm kind of doing a little fast. So that's probably has something to do with it as well. Okay, so let me move these down. Add this together. I'm just gonna, again, peel the back off. It should take off if there's any little residual pieces, except for the mouth. It's the only thing that can come out. And I'm just gonna do my best to line these up. So I'm just attempting, before I really press it, just to make sure they kinda line up. The reason I did two of them was just to make it a little bit thicker. I feel like I could use just a teeny bit of coral. That's good, I don't wanna overdo it. I feel like I go from nothing to crazy. All right, so I'm just pressing these together. Okay, so then let's see if we were to go this way instead. Hold on, I can't, I gotta move these out of the way or else I'm gonna end up, I feel like I'm gonna get them stuck to the card. So let's pull this. I'm gonna go ahead and put some um, seal plus on this pearlescent paper. I think it should stick, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that works. So seal plus is pretty good on most stuff. Just trying to make sure I hit some of those. Want it this way, let's see. Let's take a look at which way we want it. We want it to be yeah, I'm gonna have it so it doesn't really match up. Okay, there's that. Then I'm gonna put some liquid glue on the back of this. And just pop this in here. Okay, so remember we did, we do have adhesive here on the back, I'm just gonna put just a little bit of liquid just to make sure, since we already stuck it a little bit lightly to something, that the major body components don't get too wiggly. Okay, now, one thing about this though, I feel like little dude here needs some sort of an eye because with that crazy eye now granted I don't have a googly eye but if we have and I'm sure we can make one if we don't have one we could either do we have these little tiny elegant gems that would be a pretty good eye so let me just I'm just gonna show you what I mean you could pick this up you could color it if you wanted to Wrong side, come on. Could color it if you wanted to. I think I would color it. You could also use, so there's that. You could also use a pearl. Where are our little pearls? Oh, I have so many things in here. Opal rounds, that would be kind of a good idea too. You could do an opal round. Let me find my pearls. Here they are. That's what's left of some of them anyway. And I'm actually going to just color this with my Stampin' Blends with the black. So I'm just going to take one, just use the brush tip. Because I don't want it to be too dark black, but it kind of gives it like a grayish look. So there's that. Then I'm going to pick this up and pop it right on there. Oop, come on. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use this other end. I know you're not probably not supposed to, but 
use the I used the uh, putty end just to press it in place so it was where I wanted it. So there's that with the pearlescent paper. I don't know if you can see it or not. It does have a little bit of shine to it, which is pretty cool. Let me move this over. So the only thing, and I know we didn't make anything with the other one. This was a little bit to it, but the only other thing we really need is some sort of a uh, sentiment, which the seascape. I like that one. I'm here for you always. We'll do that. And I'm just going to do that on a little scrap of white. Let's see, that looks, that's pretty good. And pick this up. And I'm going to do this in Bermuda Bay. That way it, it kind of brings some of the Bermuda Bay in. And then hold on before I finish with this, I'm gonna I'm gonna jazz this up a little bit. I'm gonna move this over so I don't wreck it. Oops. And I have my um calypso coral marker. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with the splatter. So we kind of have like that dotted uh splattery look. And I'm gonna do it with my pool party marker as well. Ooh, that one got a little a little extra. Okay. All right. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit, but I just want to give it a second for it to actually dry. Other thing you could do with this too. And once again, I say, forgive me because all of my wink of Stella's ran out, but I have this other um, shimmer pen. You could do the same thing with this, adding a little bit of splotches to it there's that one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with my heat tool really quickly just to get it to dry okay that looks good and the only other thing, I'm going to trim this down some. So I'm just going to come along the bottom. Attempt to cut in a straight line. That's a better straight line. I think. I'm not really 100% sure. You know, if precision is your thing, there's definitely many ways you can go for that. I am sometimes more of a wing it person. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim this up just a smidge. I'm going to leave that kind of big glob of wink of Stella up there because I like it. <laughs> All right, and then one uh, even other thing you could do if you kind of wanted this to stand out just a little bit more is you could cut a little piece and I think I have a scrap piece here yep of black so what I'm gonna do is just gonna kind of put this on and I'm gonna cut the best I can to it There we go. That's good. I will say good. That's good enough to send. Might not be perfect, but I'm not really one who is striving for perfection. Let me go down here at the bottom. And if you feel like this is covering your fish a little bit, you could certainly tone it down or use a little bit smaller of a piece so really pretty 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 card so what I'm thinking is the other pieces that we did I did one where was that one I put because one oh here it is this one could totally be kind of an aqua-ish 
card with the background. So I'm going to trim this down and we're going to put our fish on top of that. So what I want is, let me see what this measures. Four and a quarter. I'm going to keep this the whole four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to trim this to be four and a quarter by five and a half. So one thing, the only thing you have to note is when you're using the acetate that comes in the packaging, like we're doing right now, it might not have a hundred percent straight of an edge. So just kind of keep that in mind. And we could, I probably could use this, this piece is a little skinny. I could probably use this for something else, but we'll see. Okay, so then what you can do, same thing again. When you're putting this on, it is window sheet, so you're going to see it. So you can go ahead and put this onto a whole acetate, I'm sorry, adhesive sheet. Put the whole thing, because then you're not going to really be able to distinguish where the kind of missed spots are. Okay. Just going to give that a press. And trim. There's a little teeny piece that didn't get adhesive, but that's okay. I think we're good. Oops. Just going to trim this down. So those of you who are Cincinnati peeps will appreciate this, or Ohio, I guess you could say in general. But this morning, and I'm going to have to trim this down just a smidge because that one piece was a little wonky. And actually, once you pull this off, you probably will be okay. Let me see. Hold on one second. Just pause for one sec. I'm going to press this from the back because I want to make sure that I actually got one there. And so this morning when we were going to Aldi, uh, we were listening to, I usually listen to the 60s or the 70s or the 80s on XM, and they played the WKRP theme song, which I can now not get out of my head. <laughs> I used to watch that, my parents watched that show growing up, and um, it's just funny. Like, I cannot get the song out of my head. It does take a little bit of pressing to make sure that this adheres. There's a couple little tiny spots that didn't really have the adhesive removed, like a little one here, here, and here. It's not really a whole lot, but just FYI, you have to give it a good push. But darn it, I cannot get that song out of my head. That is a true earworm. <laughs> All right, so there's how it looks once it's adhered. And I will say, you can see the adhesive in the background, but it kind of gives like a texture look to it. It's not ununiform, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. So we'll do same thing on this one. I know we have the same. It's just a background, so it's not really too critical because it is a full card size or full, full front sheet. So I'm just going to use this just for the heck of it. We could trim it down a little bit if we wanted to. Just kind of depends. <laughs> you love it. I remember, I can't remember what the, Les Nessman was the little news dude, right? I can't remember what the other guys was that was kind of shaggy with the dark tinted glasses. He was always really funny, but I can't recall his name at the moment. So, and since I have a lot of stuff here, I'm going to go ahead and use the um, Stamp and Seal Plus just to really make sure that it stays on the card front. I did use thick white cardstock because again I think I told you that before I tend to only really use the thick white cardstock and since I am lining this up with the whole front what I usually like to do is kind of put it standing up and then kind of stand this make sure it matches my fingers I seem to find that I can make it actually meet the front better that way so and then what I usually do is I'll just press it from the back you can even use uh, your bone folder if you wanted to, kind of just to give it a nice 
press to make sure it sticks, but that looks really good. Just reinforce my fold. I missed a teeny little bit up here, but that's okay. So same thing. Again, this little fish might be a little bit much. I'm going to do one more with my adhesive sheet, and I'm going to do, instead of the fish, we'll do the um, seahorse. But I'm still going to do the same thing where I glue them together because I find it's a little bit easier that way. So I just need one more piece of adhesive sheet. Set this off to the side. And then the other thing, I'll show you something else we can do with the pearls since we have them. And you don't have to use the pearls. If you have uh, a color that coordinates that you want to use, you could totally use that. You know what? I'm going to use the back of this little piece here since we kind of bunked this up earlier. So But it's funny too, if you think about like the theme songs of the 70s, the 80s, uh, fame. I know we're always talking about that on here when uh, Debbie Allen joins us. <laughs> but, and I apologize, she could be here today. I just missed the intro since I did a little bit different. So I'm just gonna die cut these. I'm gonna go through two times so we have two of them. But when you have those theme songs from the 70s, you know all of them. I know I loved One Day at a Time was one of my favorite ones. Do you guys have any shows that you still watch over and over from the 70s? Because I just totally love that. I'm going to go one more time with this. Got this one little piece stuck. I'm going to do this once more. Good times. I know that one by heart. Loved good times. What's happening? That was kind of more of the 80s. And sometimes I'll walk around like humming these tunes and people are like, what are you singing? I'm like, uh, such and such. Don't you know what song it is? I guess it must only sound good to me. You could also add this in with the, um, coral. If you wanted to do the coral dye instead. One last one. The Jeffersons. I love the Jeffersons. Moving on up, baby. That's a... These are some good shows. Shows nowadays. I mean, they still do have good shows. And gosh, I sound like an old complainer when I say that. But there's no good shows on television anymore. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can nip this. This one's a little teeny bit tighter because of the spikes. But... Once I do it once and hopefully don't wreck it, you'll know how to do it with no problem at all. All right, that was pretty simple. And we have our little tail down here. What you kind of have to do is get your scissors under it. And just go just till you barely, you can feel when you nip it. That way you don't get too much. So I'm just guessing you would use these as a whole thing and like, poke it off. I don't know. That kind of, <laughs> it, it's a little confusing to me of why you would have just these little tiny spots in here. I haven't seen anybody, I don't think, make a card with it yet that it's stayed connected. If anybody has seen somebody do that, please let me know because I would love to see how it looks. All right, one more. Miami Vice, that was one that was always a good one to stay in your head. Mr. Belvedere. Alf, the little girl that was a robot. I can't remember what that one was. Brady Bunch. Oh, all those good shows. I am going to save this because this is a good piece. I could potentially use this for a sentiment if I wanted to. Okay, so let me grab this out again. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to grab, where is it here? Dark Balmy Blue. I'm just going to do a couple of these. Nope, that's not dark enough. Good to know. Let us try light Misty Moonlight instead. I don't want it to be too dark. How many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do one more. Because odd numbers apparently are more pleasing 
when you're looking at them. I'm gonna set that on the side for a minute. Bring my card back in here. And oops, I needed this, I forgot. I'm gonna pull this off. Do they have one in the catalog? Dots, is that what you're talking about? I'm just over here reliving my youth singing song, so I'm sorry if I missed something there, Donna. They do have adhesive sheet in the catalog, if that was what you're asking, but I just went through mine already, so I'm back to the adhesive we used to have. But we do still have adhesive sheet, thank goodness. Okay, so here's one. And I'm just gonna peel the second thing off. The original CSI, Las Vegas. I don't think I ever watched that show. I know a lot of people did. I don't think I ever watched that show, though. Law and Order, you know. Dun, dun. Do, 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 do. We should play uh, Name That Tune one day while we're making cards. I'm sure that'll really make everybody tell me to stop singing. So, again, I'm just lining these up the best I can. Not pressing hard yet because I want to make sure it's it's pretty well centered before I push these little doodlies over here on my fingers make sure I get all these little pieces out so just pressing with your fingers I noticed a little teeny piece here that I missed that I'm gonna try to trim off it's a really small little thing and then there is a little teeny dot stuck in there there we go okay so let's see move this over here we have our little seahorse. Now, should he be a color? Because I'm not really quite sure. I know seahorses are, well, here's the negative. Seahorses are different colors. Do we think he needs to have like a little bit of color to kind of stick out from the background? Maybe like a, a blue? Would be a good one. Misty Moonlight? I don't know if that'll be a little too dark. Let me see. I don't really know that much about seahorses. They're pretty cool, but I can tell you that they are very tiny. I don't know, do they even get to be this big? Oh, you know what else we still need is one more. I'm gonna do one more black for his eye. So I have those blue ones and they're gonna be for bubbles. And then I'm gonna do a black one for his eye. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. So again, he does have the adhesive on him, so, or she, whatever it is. I think uh, seahorses, if I'm not mistaken, the females have the eggs and then the males carry them around. So that's kind of neat. All right, so I'm going to do this. The alcohol should be dry. Instead, I'm going to try to pick this up with my putty tip. Let me just freshen that a little bit. Oh, Lord. Watch them probably out. Yep, this is probably the end of my putty. So I'm going to pick up my black eyeball. Oh, that fit in there perfectly. And then I'm just going to do some bubbles. Come on now. One. You could do these different sizes if you wanted to. We'll just do a couple other random bubbles. Okay, so there's that. Again, I still didn't use my my cute fish over here. He was uh, the glimmer paper, so he's really cute. So I have to use him for something else. But let me just wipe these couple of things into the trash here. And the only thing we need to add on this is a sentiment. And I also have, just because I brought this over to show you the stamps, we can also do love you to the beach and back. That's really cute. Now. One other thing about acetate, you can stamp on it. And I don't know if I want to risk this, but I'm going to try it. Worst case scenario, my nieces will get this card and they won't care anyway. But 
When you stamp on acetate, you have to use stays on and you have to stamp with intention. And the reason being is because it will wiggle. So if I was a smarter woman, I would probably would have done this ahead of time and said, oh, and look, I did it perfectly. So here's this for you, but I'm going to try. I'm going to put it in the corner down here. So I'm going to grab my stays on because that will stay on anything pretty much, but it does will specifically stay on window sheet. Let me just make sure it's nicely inked up. Good part is I can see what I'm doing. So, okay. So it's nicely inked up. So you want to make sure when you stamp, you stamp straight down. You kind of hold your card and bring it up because it will wiggle if you stamp on it. So just keep that in mind. Maybe don't do it on like your first card. Holy moly. That was a miracle. Now, if I can just put this away without dropping it, let me move this because <laughs> you know how that goes sometimes. How cute. How cute are they? Absolutely adorable. So today, again, in case you're coming in late, we learned to stamp on window. I'm sorry, not stamp. We did the alcohol on the acetate or window sheet, which this does come in your your clear photopolymer, so you have some free to use when you buy a stamp set. Here's another little leftover piece. We made a couple of them. This one also had some Wink of Stella, but again, the big blobs didn't dry very well, so keep that in mind. We also stamped, this one was on, and I think I, did I throw the scrap away? Maybe I did. I was going to show you what the cutout looked like. That one was on the pearlescent paper pearlized, pearlescent. I'm always calling it the opposite of whatever it actually is. The specialty paper. Yeah, I don't know what happened to it. I probably threw it away. So we did the alcohol markers with the alcohol. We did a couple of them. We used the um, hair color applicator. One has alcohol in it and one was just air so I could kind of blow it all over the place. You can also use the water painter brushes and the glass of alcohol which is that one again your alcohol must be at least 91 percent 99 is optimal because it will give you faster and smoother flow so just depends uh drugstore near me only had 91 so that's what i went with should have looked when i went to target yesterday but didn't think about it since this was working just fine but if you use the uh 99 it actually will make it flow smoother and easier you'll need way way less of that. So not really a whole lot of stamping. We only stamped our sentiments. Definitely make sure you give this time for the stays on to dry. It is an alcohol based ink, so it will dry quicker. However, last thing you want to do is you went through all this work with this starfish. Oh my gosh. And I just realized his eye is in the wrong spot. Hold on. I must not have pressed it down. <laughs> Hold on one second. Yeah, I'm like, his eyeball is not looking there we go. Very accurate. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed these cards. I think they were super duper fun. If you have an idea of something you'd like to see done, please let me know. Send me an email. Send me a message on Facebook. Um, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube and you would like to know something, you can leave me a comment there. I get far less comments on my YouTube channel, so they are uh, pretty easy to answer. Also, if you're not following me on Facebook or on YouTube, follow me. There's nothing that you have to do. It's free. I would love to have you there. And also it helps me when I have more subscribers to be able to do more things with both channels. So I thank you all so much. If you have a friend you think would love to watch this video, send them my way. If you would like to see this card later, I'll post it on my blog. If you want to see a up close picture of it, in case you've never visited, my blog is reachthestamper.com and you can shop for almost all these supplies used, maybe minus the alcohol and the hair applicators in my online store 24-7, reachthestamper.stampinup.net. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to join me. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you real soon.